you, you were speaking moments ago about her memory and how sharp she was, uh, even in those final days. Uh, talk to us a little more about what she was like. Did you, did you see hints of the trademark humor, too, in those final conversations? And um, what, was she, what was she concerned most about in her final days and, and what, she, what, what you feel comfortable sharing with us? Well, she was... She loved Balmoral Estate, and she took me over to the window, and she, she was just showing me uh, the different gardens uh, and flower beds that were there, and just pointing out uh, her, her, just the estate that brought her so much comfort and peace in her life. But uh, at the end of the meal on uh, Saturday evening, uh, she said to me, and I'm sure she must have done this to many as a cleric, but she said to me, "That's me finished with uh, with my meal. It's time for me to go to my bed." Uh, and I was staying in a place called uh, the Tower Rooms, and she said, your queen is sending you to the Tower. Uh, and uh, she just <laughs> s smiled at me uh, as she said that, uh, and, and she made sure that I understood uh, that I got the joke rather than it being too serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get the joke too, and what a gift you've given us here this morning by sharing just at least a little piece of the window you had of the Queen in her final days. It's the closest we have been, certainly, to the Queen yes. uh, before, before losing her. Uh, Reverend, thank you so much. And just to hear My that... Thank you, thank you, that the Queen took him to the window at Balmoral and said, these the are the gardens that yes. bring me peace and so much joy. Not a surprise, but a gift to hear that, right, Robert? Well, David, that was an incredible interview, I thought, that we had somebody that was with the Queen in her final days that was prepared to talk about it. Yeah. And the thing that jumped out at me, and I saw Victoria as, as journalist jump back as well, is when he said, she told me she had no regrets. I mean, if that's not a headline for all the tabloids tomorrow, I don't know what is. I hope they're watching us. <laughs> I hope they're not. <laughs> but no regrets from somebody who had deep Christian faith, obviously, until the very end. And I loved what he said, too, about a woman who had so much power but that the humility, and even in those final days, that, that her belief uh, had her had her really answering to someone even higher than herself. Such an important yeah. philosophy, and you could tell that she really felt that. I think it comes back to what King Charles said in his first message. The line that really stuck out for me from that first address that he made as king to the nation was he described a life well lived. And I think that really sums everything up, and I think that's why we feel that we can also celebrate here today as well, because she performed her duties fully and thoroughly for many years. She was 96 years old. Her husband, her strength and stay, is no longer with us. And she was at Balmoral. And there's something about it that just feels so complete. It's incredibly sad, incredibly poignant. But it was, as Charles said, a life well lived. And we are breaking away from ABC's coverage, which continues online at ksat.com. If I'm reading the order of things right in today's services, the next big event is coming up in about one hour at St. George's Chapel there at Windsor Castle. The Queen's procession just about to arrive there on site. That's right. We've been covering this all morning and earlier there was a funeral service at Westminster Abbey and this is the same building in which the Queen was married and crowned. It was a, a beautiful and somber service early this morning. Yeah, it was. it's rare that we are so aware that history is unfurling before our eyes, and it's been like that all morning long. Anyway, back here at home, much more on that coming up, and we'll be looking in throughout this newscast, of course. ABC continues to cover it. But a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is September 19th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we are back to the heat, but let's go ahead and look outside with live cam. For now, we are only at 77 degrees, which, okay, we can handle that. Yeah, we can handle that. It's the afternoon temperatures are not going to be so much fun. You know, August kind of teased us, right? We had we got some rain and things were looking better. And now we've gotten into September and we're drying out again and temperatures are warming up. I want to start with the radar. There is some rain out there, but this is all along the coastal plain. This is not going to make it up to San Antonio. So Kennedy, Victoria, Cuero, you do have a chance for a shower. Just know it'll be brief and you won't pick up much rain. Cloud cover has been there this morning here around San Antonio. We'll start off mostly cloudy and then end up partly to mostly sunny this afternoon. A lot of cloud cover out west too in places like Del Rio where it is still cloudy at this hour. Temperatures have made it up to 80 at Stinson, 78 Randolph. 72 Seguin, 76 in Holotus. Pair of 70s for comfort in Bernie Stage areas that were in the 60s earlier. Pollen count is in. Pigweed jumps to the top of the list today. It's in the moderate category. You don't see that very often. Molds, ragweed, grass 
are all low. Well, let's look at the forecast for today, and we expect the temperatures will warm up fairly quickly. 87 noontime, still partly cloudy, but I think we go mostly sunny this afternoon. 95. The big takeaway here, though, is that humidity will be high enough that the heat index will be up close to 100 during the uh, 3 to 5 o'clock hour. And then look for temperatures to drop into the upper 80s by 8 or 9 o'clock. Could we hit 100 this week? That's the big question. We look at that and the latest on Hurricane Fiona coming up in just a bit. What about those roadways, Stephen? What are you seeing out there? Justin, thank you very much. Let's get a look here at the roads 410. The commute is actually pretty quiet right now. Uh, as we get a quick drive around town 410, you saw there at Starcrest, pretty sunny out there, so maybe some sunglasses is a good idea. But there at 281 at San Pedro, you can see that there are still a few vehicles moving on out there trying to get to their destination. Just remember to drive safe because we do have some issues that trans guide cameras aren't picking up. Thankfully, they're not really causing big issues in terms of slowdowns. US 90 over here in the eastbound lanes, we have a crash that just was reported by text out a few minutes ago, but I'm not really seeing anything that's going to cause any delays for drivers or anyone that is traveling in the eastbound lanes here of 90. Just remember to drive safe. Looks like a little bit of a slowdown just popped up, but nonetheless, be on the lookout for those first responders. They're out there to clear the scene and of course make the roads a safer place. Let's take a drive over here though, and you can see there uh, that is what's reflected on our map at this point, but another area, of course, we will continue to watch throughout the morning. Now let's go ahead and give you a quick bird's eye view at 901 this morning. Again, few slowdowns remain, but nothing too drastic is what we saw a little bit earlier. Morning rush has dwindled down, but as you see also on the map, lots of that active construction. So make sure to grab your phones now and you can open your camera app, scan that QR code. I just updated the list earlier this morning of road closures that are taking place in and around the Alamo City. Just don't forget, scroll to the bottom of the page and plan your commute ahead of time. Guys. And again, ABC's coverage of the Queens uh, procession continues online at KSAT.com. Top local stories are following. San Antonio police investigating a couple of early morning stabbings on the southeast side. According to police, this one started around 3 a.m. when a contract worker was emptying out the trash cans in front of an HEB on South New Braunfels near Geevers. When a man walked up to him and stabbed him in the back, the suspect took off before officers arrived. The victim was taken to a hospital but expected to be okay. And a few minutes later, officers got a call for another stabbing nearby on East South Cross near South New Braunfels and 281. Police believe the same suspect ran up to another man sleeping on a bus bench and stabbed him multiple times and then ran off again. This second victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. It appears police may have the person responsible for these attacks in custody. In other news, a driver injured in a crash on the north side. This happened uh, just after one this morning on Wetmore, just south of Warsbach Parkway. An officer on the scene said it was a single vehicle crash. Fire crews had to use the jaws of life to get the driver out, but man only suffered minor injuries. Power to the street and traffic lights were affected, but CPS Energy uh, dispatched a crew out there to restore power to the area. And repairs have been completed in Lytle after a damaged water line was discovered. Crews began working on those repairs late last night. And around 5.30 this morning, they announced that the work had been completed and water was pushing out again. They did ask residents to be patient as the water pressure builds up around town. The city of Lytle will remain on a boil water notice until tomorrow. In your morning headlines, more disturbing findings as the Ukrainian army takes back cities and land from the Russians. And there has been a big international prison swap. More prisoner, rather. Yes, prisoner swap. Yes. More migrants bust to New York, and Fiona puts her Puerto Rico in the dark. Davis Sears is here with all of these morning headlines. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, uh, Justin will be talking about how the Atlantic hurricane season has been kind of quiet so far. It has. It got real loud over the weekend for, for Puerto Rico. We'll get to that in just a second, but first, more disturbing discoveries coming from Ukraine. The Ukrainian army taking back ground. The Russian army captured during their assault on the country. But according to the mayor of one city, in the northeast, there were 10 underground torture chambers where civilians were interrogated and beaten. There were 50 bodies discovered in a mass grave in another city. There were several rows of wooden crosses in a forest with no names on the graves, just numbers. Last month, the Biden administration sent another $3 billion in military aid to help the Ukrainians fight that war. There has been a prisoner swap, but it was between the U.S. and the Taliban. Mark Frerix is on his way home. He was kidnapped in January of 2020 as a Navy veteran and was doing contract work when he disappeared. The U.S. is sending a member of the Taliban who was in a U.S. prison on drug charges. President Biden did call Frerix's sister and let her know her brother was on his way home. 
and more buses offloading migrants at New York City's Port Authority. This time, several buses arriving in the Big Apple from El Paso. The mayor of New York not happy. The mayor of El Paso making sure the migrants are cared for during their trip north. We don't send anyone where they don't want to go. We make sure we help them and we put human beings and, you know, and we put them on buses with food and make sure they get to their destination with and make sure that we always continue to treat people like human beings. By the way, the mayor of El Paso pointed out that his city had to deal with 2000 migrants in a single day last week. The mayor of New York says they are overwhelmed and are now looking at housing the migrants on a cruise ship. Governor Greg Abbott has transported some 11,000 migrants to New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., while the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, flew 50 migrants to Martha's Vineyard last week. He said there is more to come. By the way, officials at Martha's Vineyard were able to call the National Guard to help with getting those 50 migrants on a bus and getting them to a military base on Cape Cod, where there is an emergency shelter already in place. It may be the first major hurricane of the season to hit land in the Caribbean, and Fiona is letting the folks of Puerto Rico know she means business. Fiona slammed the island with 85 mile an hour winds that knocked out power all over the island. Along with the Cat 1 winds, the rains came that caused some major flooding. You can see a bridge just gets washed away. There are predictions that parts of the island could see up to 30 inches of rain. The water will rise in the order of minutes and hours and can just take you completely off guard. Yeah, after leaving the island, Fiona expected to get stronger and take on more islands. Justin Horn has more details on the hurricane coming up in just a few minutes. Quiet so far, but man, Puerto Rico got a wake-up call over the weekend, didn't they? Yes, yeah. they did. <coughs> Thank you. Huh? Thanks, David. Right now, 907, 78 degrees. Let's go ahead and give you a live look back to... Uh, well, actually, I guess I was saying not the Queen's funeral, but live to London right now where we're getting our live look from ABC's coverage. We uh, right now are waiting the arrival of the Queen's coffin at Windsor Castle St. George's Chapel. Right now, I can't tell exactly where we are looking live, but crowds have lined the route. An hour journey from London out to Windsor, throwing flowers in front of the procession the entire way. That's right. We'll have more on this uh, when we come back after the break. It is the story of the day. Queen Elizabeth II being laid to rest. And just minutes ago, thousands of people lined the streets to say a final goodbye to their late monarch. Details for the royal funeral have been in the planning stages for years. Inside Westminster Abbey, dozens and dozens of world dignitaries and members of the royal family filled the pews. CNN's Riley Carson is in London with what you may have missed. A somber day for the United Kingdom as the world says goodbye to a queen whose reign spanned seven decades, the longest reigning monarch in British history. Let us give thanks for Queen Elizabeth's commitment to the Commonwealth throughout her reign. Westminster Abbey's tenor bell chiming once a minute for 96 minutes, marking each year of Queen Elizabeth II's life. Then London going quiet as the nation takes a moment of silence to honor the late queen. Details for Monday's funeral have been in the planning stages for years, each moment well thought out and with the queen's input. The grief of this day, felt not only by the late queen's family, but all round the nation, the Commonwealth and the world, arises from her abundant life and loving service now gone from us. Roughly 2,000 people are in attendance from world leaders, including President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, and members of the royal family. Security in the British capital at its highest level. Behold. Following the service, the Queen makes her final journey out of London to Windsor Castle, where she will be laid to rest next to her husband of 73 years, Prince Philip. In London, I'm Riley Carlson reporting. Glad we have that story. We wanted to get you all caught up. Again, we're monitoring ABC special coverage as the session arrives at Windsor Castle. We will rejoin that later on. And for now, it is 912 and only 78 degrees for now. We just know things are going to heat up, though, Just Yeah, heat's going to be a big story this week, unfortunately. Um, triple digits, not out of the question, as we said earlier. And I was just digging through some stats, and we've updated this. We are now back on track, not in a good way, uh, to be the driest on record 
uh, if things continue as they are. Now, you look at the driest year to date on record. We are now leading the way once again. 2022, we've only received 8.20 inches of rain. Now, this is at San Antonio International. We averaged 23.25 this time of year. Just to give you some perspective. You got to go back to 27 or 1917, I should say. Uh, which, uh, which is number two. They were at 8.23 inches at this point in the year. And you see the list below that. All of this to say, you know it, it has been very, very dry. And here we are again. We thought August was really going to help us out. It gave us a little bit of a bump. Didn't last very long. Now things are drying out again. And it, we're, we're going to finish the year pretty dry, barring some major event. As we go outside for you right now, we've got a few clouds there in the distance. We do have a few showers closer to the coast, but nothing here in San Antonio. 79 degrees, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 74. Heat index is at 82 with a south southeasterly breeze at about six miles per hour. There are those showers I spoke of. Beeville to Victoria, Cuero. Those are areas that could see a brief shower this morning. Rest of us are dry. We've just got the clouds and there's quite a few of them over San Antonio right now and even thicker as you go out west. Temperatures 79 at the airport, 77 hello to 77 in Bolverde, 76 right now in Seguin. A little more sun there, and you'll get more sun as you go east along I-10. Heat index forecast today, and this is the important part of the forecast because once you get into the afternoon, heat indices like this can be a little bit dangerous, especially this time of year when you're not expecting it. But uh, the, the feels like number could go as high as 100 this afternoon with an air temperature around 95. We have enough humidity to make that happen, so be aware. 95, New Braunfels, 94 in Seguin today, 93 Castroville, 93 Fair Oaks Ranch, 94 in Pleasanton, all these numbers well above average. Here's why, high pressures in control. We see that big heat high sitting right over Texas, not where we want it to be. It sits here for several days before it finally moves out of the way, but you can see that it is made for clear skies across much of the nation's midsection. All the action is up here across the Midwest. You got some showers down in Florida and some action out west as well. And then, of course, we've got Hurricane Fiona bringing a lot of rain to parts of Puerto Rico. This is the Dominican Republic here, and you can see the eye wall just went across the island and is now starting to reemerge out in the Atlantic. This is going to allow for Fiona to strengthen. And look at all the rain that is still falling across a waterlogged Puerto Rico. They've had a lot of flooding issues there, lost power to most of the island, and this is still going on. So they're going to have a lot of issues there and a lot of cleanup, unfortunately. Does look like the eye wall is just starting to reemerge there. As it does, as I mentioned, this thing's probably going to get stronger. Winds are at 90 miles per hour, but it strengthens to a cat too as it nears the Bahamas. Then eventually near Bermuda, probably a major hurricane. And then eventually moving up towards colder waters. This does not affect the U.S. mainland, but it probably will send some waves in the direction of the East Coast. Long term forecast here. Yeah, high pressure stays in control through the weekend. But after that, we start to see it move east and that could open the door for a front. Not a big front, but a front nonetheless, and that is scheduled perhaps on Monday. Still a little early to get excited about it yet, but it is in the forecast. In the meantime, 98 degrees Thursday, Friday, our hottest days. Could we hit 100 either one of those days? It's possible. And that's as we officially go into fall on Thursday. 97 Saturday, 95 Sunday. Hopefully after that, we will get a cool down, guys. Gotcha. 8.03 p.m. Correct. On Thursday evening. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll celebrate on Friday, right, Chef? Yes, we anxiously await that. I mean, at least to say it's fall. <laughs> Just to say it's fall, we yeah. We can do that, yeah. 917, 79 degrees. Let's go ahead and go and take a look at, uh, as many people say, their final goodbyes to Queen Elizabeth II. I think this is very close to Windsor Castle now. The procession has now slowed, and at some point will be uh, a, a honor guard will carry her coffin into the chapel at St. George's Chapel there on the grounds of Windsor Castle. Very close to her final destination now. And at St. George's Chapel, committal service will be held, attended by members of the royal family and personal staff who work or have worked for the Queen. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 920. We are taking a live look back over there as thousands say goodbye to Queen Elizabeth II. You're looking live right now where it is. Uh, let me double check the time real quick in London. It is 321 
in the afternoon. And this service has gone like clockwork today. The arrival at Westminster Abbey, the procession towards Windsor Castle, and that's where you're watching a huge throng of people silently watching as the procession, including the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II, is now arriving, arrival, arriving rather, at its final resting place. Uh, next on the big agenda this afternoon is the service at St. George's Chapel there on the grounds of Windsor Castle. That's right, and we'll have continuing coverage, of course, on our website as well at ksat.com. Well, back here at home, 921, the U.S. Air Force Software Development Unit, the 90th Cyberspace Operations Squadron, is the newest tenant inside the historic San Antonio Light Building. They are charged to do best in the world at delivering solutions for cyberspace operations, and they're here in San Antonio. Max Massey joined us live from their new headquarters. Max, what has been the talk of the morning there? Good morning, guys. We are talking about everything from technology to retention and recruitment to the mission. Joined here with Waldo. So, in terms of the mission, explain it to us and, uh, and try to try to dumb it down for me. You got it, Max. So, here at the 90th Cyberspace Operations Squadron, we're the only or only operational squadron in the Air Force that develops capabilities in support of offensive and defensive cyberspace operations. Uh, what that means to most folks, um, to use an analogy, everybody has a smartphone today. Um, and if there is an application that you need, you can go to the App Store and you can go download it. Uh, for our offensive and defensive operators, um, they have something similar, though not as robust. And so when they have an, a mission that they need to execute and uh, they don't have a application or a way to go do that, uh, the job of the 90th is to build them that application, to go build them whatever it is that they need to be able to execute that mission, uh, where they need to execute it, and when they need to execute it. And you guys do it in seemingly lightning fast time. We do. So we work. what makes us, again, unique is the way that we're organized and the way that we interact uh, with the operational community. Uh, so we sit side by side with them to understand what they need uh, and ultimately deliver it to them as quickly as they need it. At times, that's been a day or two, uh, and then sometimes it takes... For harder problems, it'll take weeks, maybe months, but uh, but at the end of the day, we are developing exactly what they need when they need it. I mean, this is amazing stuff. So the work being done here has not only life or death implications, but huge military functional operations. Correct, correct. So uh, the when we look at, again, when we look at security today, uh, specifically cybersecurity, um, we're reading every single week about you know attacks to critical infrastructure, to companies, to the government, uh, from bad cyber actors. Uh, our job is to ultimately develop the applications that our operators need to both defend our national security uh, as well as take the fight forward if we, when, when called upon or when tasked. All right, so we have seen San Antonio grow so much over the last decade. Tell us about your retention and recruitment strategies. Yeah, so the, the move downtown ultimately for us was a big one, and it was motivated really by that more than anything else. So uh, in the past, um, the 90th has only ever lived on base, um, JBSA Lackland. Uh, we're now moving uh, beyond the gates, right, and, and moving down here to the middle of San Antonio. Uh, and ultimately, that's to get after uh, the recruitment and retainment of the, uh, the best talent in the world, right? And for us, that means identifying them in high school, right, when, when they don't know just how good they can be, uh, and then helping teach them and grow them to, to become the operators that we need. Um, and then the light specifically is pretty unique, right? So the 67th Cyberspace Wing, uh, their motto is from darkness to light. Um, the name of 420 Broadway is the light. Uh, our mo our uh, um, mascot at the 90th is the Shadow Warriors. Uh, so lots of play on light there too. So uh, for us, it felt very serendipitous that, uh, that the building that we ended up, you know, calling our new headquarters, our new home, um, is is the light, the historic light building here in San Antonio. Uh, great access to the Riverwalk, to local businesses, um, to the local universities, to the Pearl. Um, ultimately, we're confident that it improves not only the quality of life of our folks, uh, but will allow us to engage with the community in ways that we've never been able to before. Waldo, well, thank you so much. And guys, we are far from done. We're going to have so much more coming up on the news at noon. And of course, KSAT.com. Back to you guys. All right, Max, thank you. Right now, it's 925, 79 degrees. And let's go ahead and take a live look again as the Queen's Coffin is on its final journey. And this is being driven in by a state hearse after an elaborate and somber procession through London. And the coffin arrived at Windsor for the communal service about 14 minutes ago. There you see the castle in the background. We can also tell you that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, has now begun his journey back to the United States after attending the service this morning at Westminster Abbey, which included roughly 500 dignitaries from around the world.
That's right. Also involved 3,000 military personnel as it passed many of the capital's most famous landmarks. We're expecting the uh, next service, the committal service, to begin at St. George's Chapel, the Windsor Castle, coming up here closer to the top of the hour. But for now, we'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 9.30 here, but we're going to take you to 3.30 p.m. where the Queen Elizabeth's coffin is on its final journey to Windsor Castle. You can see the huge crowds trying to say their final goodbyes to Queen Elizabeth. All right. Now we've got a horse escort there with some of the guards ahead of the uh, coffin, which will be transferred to uh, a, a, a guard carrying the, the coffin into St. George's Chapel. As Steph was saying, it is now 3.30 there, British Standard Time. Next service scheduled at the top of the hour at 4 o'clock inside St. George's Chapel for the committal service for Queen Elizabeth II. And just stay with us for more on this committal service. And for now, here at home, it's 9.30 and it is 79 degrees. And, of course, we are expecting things to warm up and uh, not so much as far as, like, the rain goes, I guess, at least here in our immediate area. Now, this week looks kind of boring. Uh, no rain. It's going to be hot. We're going to see those really warm temperatures. You know, there are some changes down the line, I think, that, that look pretty good. But we're going to have to deal with this heat for one more week, at least, uh, with uh, temperatures in the mid-90s this afternoon. I want to show you the, the weather map here, the, the live radar. We've got some showers out there, but these are going to stay relegated to the coast. So if you're watching us from Kennedy, Quero, maybe even Gonzales, you're seeing a few light showers work in your direction. Those are areas where we could see a very light shower, a quick downpour. I just don't think these make it up to San Antonio. So let's look at the weather headlines here. And there are still some headlines to speak of because as we get towards midweek, we're going to have to watch temperatures very closely. Could we hit 100? And keep in mind, we've been stuck at 58, 100 degree days. We get one more. We tie the all time record. We get two days 100 or above. We will set the record. Not sure if that's a record we want to set, but something we'll watch this week. Fiona, we talked about Hurricane Fiona earlier. It has made landfall in the Dominican Republic after hitting Puerto Rico over the weekend. It's dropping a lot of heavy rain, and that is starting to move north. Meantime, we're going to watch for a cold front by the end of the week into early next week. That's also something to watch, and that could bring some much-needed relief. 80 degrees right now. Dew point is at 73. It feels like temperature is at 84. We're at 80 right now here in San Antonio, 80 in the Braunfels, a lot of 70s still on the map. But uh, we'll again make our way into the 90s this afternoon, 95, the forecast high temperature with a heat index somewhere close to 100. So be careful out there this afternoon. Much more on the extended forecast and when this heat finally ends. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes. Justin, thank you. I'm not seeing it on Transkai, but we do have one lingering accident for sure right now. Southbound 35 approaching Thousand Oaks. We've got uh, traffic stacking right now back to about O'Connor. So not too bad, but that's one of the incidents right now. Otherwise, we've got uh, normal slowdowns in the construction zones around town. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. And finally, it was a big weekend for the Dallas Cowboys, kicking their way to victory. Not so much for the Texans, and a former Spurs assistant coach is now a WNBA champion. David Sears is back. Lots to discuss here again, David. How about Becky Hammond? Yay! We'll talk about her in just a second, but first, let's start with the Cowboys, because I know um, Stephanie's excited. The Cowboys getting their first win of the season yesterday after a last-second field goal. It looked promising for Dallas after the first half. Cowboys up 17-3. to Defense had sacked Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow four times, but Burrow and Bengals would come back in the second half. That tied it at 17, 345 left to play in the game. And check out that pass right there from Cooper Rush. And then from 50 yards out, Brett Mayer, thank you very much. That was his second field goal of 50-plus. The first one was 54. Cowboys end up with a huge win. All game long, they kept talking about it. it was Jim Nance and Tony Romo, and all they could talk about, well, if you're 0-2, nothing's good, you can't make the playoffs, blah, 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 blah. So the good news is the Cowboys are now 1-1. One one. Final score. So there you go, <laughs> 20, to, 20 to 17. So, we'll take it. So, you know, and that's their backup, Cooper Rush. You know the thing, the key with Cooper Rush yesterday, 
zero turnovers. Did not throw an interception, did not get sacked and fumbled. So that's a, uh, that's a key when you're a backup quarterback. Yeah. He, that happen. he put it on Helpful. the money when it mattered the most. I have a question for you, a Cowboys question, I'll call it David Sears. Okay. And you may or may not be able to answer this. Where was the Cowboys run game? Where was Zeke Elliott? I saw Jonathan Pollard get off some nice runs yesterday. There were, Where was Zeke? It was, it was kind of odd yesterday. I haven't yeah. really seen this much. But Pollard would go in for a series, uh -huh. and then Zeke would come in for a series. So neither one of them got a whole lot of yards. Right. Pollard had that one long run for a touchdown. At first they said it was a pass because it's kind of one of those shuffle deals, but it looked more like a pitch. So it was counted as a, as a touchdown run. Zeke was, had a couple of nice runs, 10, 11, 12 yards. But uh, so combined, they were just a little shy of 100 yards total. But they were giving each other a lot of, a lot of touches. They were dividing them up pretty evenly. And I, I, I got I to gotta guess that one of the reasons they're doing it, I did, did not hear Mike McCarthy after the game. Yeah. But one of the reasons they're doing it is because it's a 17-game season. I, I, by the way, I call him Jonathan. It's Tony. Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard? Yes, sir. That's who okay. I'm at. Yeah. All right. So, all right, well, let's get to the text. So the Cowboys yes, are going to win. So they're one and one. So they got a chance for the playoffs now, according to uh, all the guys in the booth. And then uh, the Texans. And the Texans, well, the Texans are like one and a half. They still, I guess they still got a chance at the, at the playoffs because they've got the tie. And then yesterday they got the win. One thing we found out about the Texans yesterday, they got a pretty good field goal kicker. He kicked three field goals, and that was all they got. And it was a uh, slow start for the Broncos, but they ended up uh, being able to put the Texans away. And the thing, the Texans got to learn to play four quarters. They played for pretty good in the first half, but then in the second half, not so much. And they end up losing. And look at this. It's only, it's what, what, here's the final. Let's show the final for you. Yeah, see, 16 to 9. It's mm -hmm. not like they got blown out in Denver. They just, they just didn't play the second half as well as they did the first and, half. And I'm already hearing some people say, David, is Lovey mm -hmm. Smith doing to Houston what he did to Chicago? Oh, give him a chance. Come I on. know. <laughs> it's only two games in. That's yeah. me telling you to give him a chance. Okay. I'll All right, now let's get to the fun part of the weekend. It was fun when the Cowboys win, but this was really great stuff. And let the talk begin. She is an NBA, our WNBA champion. The hat looks good, doesn't it? Congratulations to former Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond. She led the Las Vegas Aces to their first WNBA title yesterday afternoon. The Aces defeated the Connecticut Suns 78-71. It was game four of the finals. So they win the series three games to one. She becomes the first head coach to win a WNBA title in their first season at the helm. She's also the first former WNBA player to win the finals as a head coach in the WNBA after the game. She was asked what she was feeling now that she is a champion. You know, when I took the job in December, I thought when I started kind of breaking down their rosters that um, I could do something with it. I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do with this team. It's a little surreal. Maybe you can call me back in like a week when it sinks in. So the first major sports championship for the city of Las Vegas as well. So you know the talk's going to start. Well, of course, RJ and I have been talking about this for, what, a couple of years now? So you talk about checking that box, uh -huh. moving did. Pop aside uh -huh. when he decides to go, and in yep. comes Becky, Becky Hammond. Hammond. She obviously can coach. She just won a, yeah, that a, she a championship. Can coach. I mean, and, you know, that's, that's the top league in, mm -hmm. in women's basketball. So what else do you want her to do? Give right. her a chance. Give her a chance. And oh, by the way, so, so we'll, we'll be talking about that for a long time, how she should get a chance to coach when Pop retires. And Pop can, you know, go ahead. Retire now. She's not, she got nothing to do. She's done. She won her championship. Bring her in this year. Real quick, real quick, because I know we've got to settle. This is kind of unfinished business. Uh -oh. UTSA at UT. <laughs> oh, UTSA wow. looked pretty good early, and then just the Ooh. wheels came off against the University of Texas. That for, well, BJ did it, you know, to him. So the running back for, for Texas, yeah, I lead that kid is tough. And I think he just kind of wore down that defense a little bit. But that yeah. first half, man, tell me those Longhorn fans in that stadium weren't scared. They tell were nervous. They were, nervous. Yes. They were very they were nervous. Going, oh, yes, they I, were. I, I was nervous the whole time. Yeah. And even um, though UT won, they, they lost a spot in the latest uh, ranking. Yeah, go that. figure. They lose to Alabama, go into 21. Right. They beat UTSA and fall to 22. Yes, sir. I guess. Who knows what these pollsters are thinking. I don't so. know. Well, now we and have then, to cheer for UTSA this weekend. Yeah, this yes. weekend. And, and, well, and then Texas goes to love it to play Texas. Tech, so I'm sorry, but I can't cheer for Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. That what? is shocking development. But look who's smiling today. Yeah. Look who's got a smile on his face over there. Has AM at, got the win? Yeah, yeah. AM got a go. win. It's a big right. win. After that Appalachian State debacle, 
Mm. They got to win. Uh, I know. I, I'm, I'm a Renetta. <laughs> don't don't bring year. that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, day, we're all day. about. Let's, put, let's, enjoy, let's enjoy the wins. <laughs> <laughs> we're all about pouring salt in wounds. All right, David, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, David. All right. See y'all. See ya. And going to the consumer news, there are some worries around the world about the rise of the dollar. Experts say its rally against other currencies is threatening to slow economic growth and speed up inflation problems. The main driver of the dollar's strength, the Federal Reserve's raising of interest rates. Another boost is expected this week. And new rules may be on the way for large regional banks. The Wall Street Journal says federal regulators are considering requirements that would force banks to add to financial cushions to guard against times of crisis. 939, 79 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Let's go ahead and take a live look out there to the Queen's final uh, resting place as the Queen's coffin makes her way to the final resting place right now. At Windsor Castle. We'll be right back. Night 43, new this morning, a man is recovering after police say he was shot by his stepfather at a home on San Antonio's north side. Officers first responded to a call for a disturbance at around 6.15 this morning on West Summit Avenue. That's near Fredericksburg Road. Now we're told that while officers were on the way, they received another call about a shooting that took place there. They arrived to find a 36-year-old man with a gunshot wound to the stomach. He was taken to a hospital. His stepfather told officers that before the shooting, he heard someone banging on his window and he reportedly grabbed his gun, went outside and saw his stepson across the street. He told officers that his stepson threw his backpack on the ground and charged at him. That's when police say he shot him one time. Police now have the man in custody for questioning, but have not charged him with a crime. We'll keep you posted as this story continues to develop. And for now, let's take a live look near Windsor Castle. And this is where uh, the Queen's coffin is headed right now in another procession this it's morning. Been, it's been a very slow procession now. It went at quite a quick clip from Westminster part of London, now out to Windsor Castle grounds where it's about to go through the gates. And we're expecting another service coming up in roughly 15 minutes at St. George's Chapel, which sits there on the grounds of Windsor Castle. She will be interred later this morning, lying right next to her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. And at St. George's Chapel, it's a committal service that will be held, attended by the members of the royal family and personal staff who have worked for the Queen or who had currently worked for the Queen. We've been watching remarkable coverage all morning long on ABC News this morning. It was surreal to watch the services inside Web's Westminster Abbey. I heard somebody say it was almost like the ultimate reality te television. It was so it was it was like watching an episode of The Crown. It, it really it really was. It was surreal and it was somber, but it was actually a very beautiful ceremony as well. And this was in the afternoon for them. But for us, it was at five in the morning. It was st stunning in every course. This has been planned for many, many years. And again, we're seeing those services uh, come to conclusion here uh, in the afternoon there in Windsor. Uh, more to come right here on KSAT and ABC. And of course, you can stream these services and procession online at KSAT.com. That's right. For now, it's 945 and now it's moved up to 80 degrees. We knew that would happen. We started in the 70s early this morning and getting a little warmer out mm -hmm. there. Big warm up. And, and listen, we know the queen loved her corgis, right? She did. Uh, she we we got to talk about dogs a little bit here. We all love our dogs. And uh, we're asking you to send in your pictures of your dogs. We're going to do a Fido's forecast. You're going to see this every now and then on some of our morning shows. We'll give you a dog walking forecast, but we want to share pictures of your four-legged friends. Take a look at this one out of Eagle Pass. We just got this in this morning. I like the tie. That's a very sharp look. We don't have a name for this pup, but uh, good looking dog nonetheless coming out of Eagle Pass. We thank you so much. And by the way, this QR code right there, you can scan it and that uh, will allow you to get to KSAC Connect so you can send in those pictures. Let's take a look at the forecast. Uh, it'll be okay this morning for the walk, 81 degrees, but humid. But by the time we get to noontime, it's already getting a little hot. And I think by the afternoon, it's one of those situations where you may want to avoid walking the dog all together. 95 at 5 p.m. The pavement, of course, gets really hot for their paws. Probably want to wait till the evening hours. We're still very much in a summer like forecast here. And here's why we've got a ridge of high pressure right over Texas and uh, the plains. And that's where the hottest temperatures have been. Yesterday was 104 in Rio Grande Village there in the Big Bend area. The cool spot this morning or uh, yesterday morning was out in California 17. So you can see the difference there. 87 degree temperature difference between the high and low. 
and we're probably going to see some of the nation's warmest temperatures again right here around Texas and in parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. There's a look at the time lapse. We've had clouds roll through. Clouds are starting to thin out some and we're sitting at 80 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at around six miles per hour. And here's a quick check of the radar. We've got some very spotty showers trying to show up, but Right there around Gonzales, we are seeing a few light showers between Cuero and Gonzales. And don't be surprised if you see a very quick downpour there. Nothing around San Antonio right now. 81 in Gonzales, 77 in Kerrville, 79 in Hondo, and uh, most of Bear County now in the 80s. And we only go up from here. Dew point trend today stays pretty high. We may not see those dew points drop out of the 70s until much later this afternoon. So with that in mind, the heat index will jump up above 100 probably by the time we get into the afternoon once you start seeing temperatures in the mid 90s. Mostly sunny at 4 o'clock. Southeast Julie winds at 9, but again, that feels like number will be higher than that. 80 degrees, 88 degrees at 8 p.m., 86 at 9 p.m. Again, there's our ridge of high pressure. Everything working up and around this ridge, so it's staying away from San Antonio for the most part, other than those light showers that we're seeing along the coast. So a lot of showers and storms going on from uh, Cleveland up to Pittsburgh and then parts of the northeast. And then you've got some showers out west. But the whole midsection of the country is very, very quiet and very hot. 99 is the forecast high in Wichita today. 94 Oklahoma City, 95 Dallas and 95 here. Some of the highest temperatures in the country with the exception of Phoenix, which is forecast to get up to around 102 this afternoon. This high pressure does wobble around a little bit, but actually moves more over top of us by Thursday and Friday. It's not until late in the weekend that it finally starts to move out of the way, and that may open the door for a frontal boundary Sunday into Monday. We're still talking about a week away here, so things can change a little bit, but that's kind of the general idea that maybe we get some relief by the first part of next week. We'll keep you posted. In the meantime, this heat is no joke. 95 Tuesday, 97 Wednesday, close to some records. 98 Thursday as we officially go into fall. But the first day of fall, we're calling for high of 98. The record's 99, so we're going to be pushing some records here, and I have no doubt that there will be some triple digits around our area by late in the work week, guys. Darn it, we were hoping we were done. I know. This we feels like summer's last gasp, though, I hope. <laughs> okay. Okay, well yeah. then, we'll, we'll power through it then. Yeah. Yes. We will. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. About 10 till 10, 80 degrees at San Antonio International. And let's go back to the coverage of the Queen's funeral and procession. And right now, uh, seems like they're still making their final journey to Windsor Castle. Very slow procession. Should be wrapping up shortly. Uh, they are have timed this out to the second, and we have no reason to believe that that won't continue here as we approach the 10 o'clock hour. And we'll be right back. And it's 9.53. Let's go ahead and take you to that live coverage there. Uh, this is the Queen's Coffin approaching Windsor Castle, which has been a very slow procession after this morning's early morning funeral. Yeah, David uh, Muir and Robin Roberts have had stellar coverage on ABC before this newscast, and we are expecting that to continue in about uh, seven or eight minutes. Again, the coffin now has slowed to a military crawl there as they march towards the services, which will be taking place at St. George's Chapel there at Windsor Castle coming up, scheduled for 10 o'clock San Antonio time. And you can see in this live look that the coffin is being driven in a state hearse up the long walk and uh, it's been a somber procession. Of course, a, you know, a somber service earlier this morning, our time about 5 a.m., but very, very beautiful, many thousands in attendance and including uh, hundreds of dignitaries, including, of course, President Biden. All right, so coverage continues here coming up in a matter of minutes, but moving on back here at home, September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month. It was established to show support to those diagnosed with the disease and raise awareness of treatment options available. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, We'll be talking with a local doctor about it, and he'll also tell us about a unique program here in the Alamo City to help treat cancer patients. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. A little earlier was looking pretty good. Um, now we're looking over here at Zarza Mora Road off of Highway 90 and I-35 at Pine. Things are moving this morning. And I don't want to harp on the heat, but it's that time of year where we kind of let our guard down some. We got to be careful this week because temperatures are going to be plenty hot. Mid 90s 
if not some upper 90s by the end of the work week and heat indices, especially today and tomorrow will be fairly significant up around 100 or so. We do get lower humidity by the end of the week, so that helps a little bit, but those temperatures come up some as we officially go into fall. The weekend's still going to be hot too, but we're hoping that by early next week we get some sort of frontal boundary and that high moves out of the way and we'll finally, finally get some sort of cool down. Yes, we will. Thank you, Justin. As we can, if we can pop up the live look again, if it's still there, the committal service is set to begin at 10 a.m. San Antonio time. That's four o'clock there, British Standard Time. Alongside is Majesty the King and members of the royal family. The congregation will be made up of past and present members of the Queen's household, including from the private estates. Also in attendance will be the Governor's General and what is called the Realm, Realm Prime Ministers. And again, the queen will be buried. Oh, there are the queen's corgis. The corgis. Yes, yes, they are. So she will be buried uh, at St. George's Chapel alongside Prince Philip, her beloved husband, who died last year at the age of 99. And so the service will be conducted by the Dean of Windsor with prayers said by the rector of Sandringham, the minister of Crathy Kirk, and the chaplain of Windsor Great Park. And again, the, uh, the trademark corgis. Uh, we know now that uh, Prince Andrew and uh, Fergie will be taking care of the corgis um, for the Queen. Yes, they will. Again, a beautiful service. Continue to watch on KSET.com.